Every week is like something different with this virus, something else shutting down, something else is going on, but how yeah. do you stick you to you change. when... <laughs> it's, it's just like when somebody cheating the game, like with Uno, everybody have their own rules, but how do you win? Where you win the control too? Yeah. Wow. Same game, new rules? I, for me personally, I'm really struggling with committing to my devotion to God. Like, I don't feel like, like, I guess for me it's like the responsibility of having to do it on my own. Like, it's one thing to have the church and to go to the church, mm -hmm. but for it to solely be on my own, like, and that's probably me being a lazy baby Christian, call it what you want, judge me later, but I really just feel like it's, it's a lot more work to, mm -hmm. like, be in my relationship with God. I was venting to God, let's, let's play that. <laughs> My struggle with this unconditional love that we as people are supposed to be giving to other people kind of hit me home because it's like we give people this unconditional love and it's abused. It's, well, they'll be there later on, so I can do what I want to do and do how I want to do. And I said, God, how are we your people? Like, how are, you, how are we your favorite thing? when we do that all the time. How are you supposed to, how are, you, how are we supposed to give unconditional love and you tell us to give this love, but you see what people are doing and you're God, like you're, you're the creator and you're giving this to us and you see how people act towards you. Like why, why would I give this? For what reason? The matter of it is your perspective is going to determine what comes out of this. It's not even a normal because we'll never go back. To right. Life. It's going to be whatever this new normal is. So, yeah, you have your struggles, but for so long you've been comparing your struggles to how it looks from the other perspective. So it's just kind of like you can, you're saying, for instance, you guys have been saying, I don't know, I, I, the devotion time that you've been having with God, for instance, it doesn't look a certain way. But who's the determinant of what it's supposed to look like? Because maybe for you, it's not supposed to be a three-hour, you know, prayer worship session. Mm -hmm. A lot of times for me, my my worship is in small pockets because what happens is I I, I rabbit hole. So I'll I'll start off thinking that okay, well, it needs to look like this. This is what a powerful relationship with God looks like, and all He's really asking for is a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. Hey, how are you doing? You all right? All right, cool. Check in with me a little later. You know what I'm saying? Not just a quick, you know. Now I play me down to sleep. So because it don't mean that. So it, it's the it's the value of or the evaluation of what all of this means from every dynamic. Now you're exploring what your time looks from a construct of you know when the world opens up again. I'm not really like it was working working for this person, or working for this body, or working for this organization worth me stressing myself out. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. Now it doesn't look like that. Or it may not look like that for me, or even your alone time. Like, do I value my alone time? Do I need it? Or how does my communication with my friends work? Are there some people that need to be out of my, like, out of my intimate friend circle? Or does that shift, not even intimate friend circle, does it, does it, the dynamic shift me? What's my relationship like with my kids? I have, did I have a passive relationship or did I have an intimate relationship? What's my relationship to my parents? Does my parent, does my parental relationship need to shift? Does my, does how I, I looked at and viewed at my relationship with the body of Christ and church and in functioning on a Sunday or a Tuesday or a regular basis need to change also with how this thing work, works with the church? It's just about perspective, I think. And I think that we're, I think on the surface level, we're all experiencing a perspective change that we're having to do with, and it's uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable for her. For all of us, I don't think there's one person who's who's experienced this pandemic that said every single day was a joy-filled, wonderful, blessed experience. Prime example with the church, they always say, Pastor Boone, Pastor Alex can't get you in heaven. Mm -hmm. You had this time now to do it to where Pastor Alex, Pastor Boone, not around. What do you do with it for yourself? You blaming the person at a job. This person not around right now. You have the opportunity to make something of your own. What do you do? And it's scary to some people to where 
what if I get so big or what if I don't? That's it. Mm -hmm. like, do I lose myself now or do I just stay safe? I have that safety net, but it's like if you don't take that risk, you never gonna know. Yeah. That's just kind of where I'm at. That's what I'm thinking. Like when my whole thing with the quarantine and everything, the first part, yeah, I dealt with myself and everything else. So I was like, all right, I'm cool, I'm there. But now it's like the stuff that I was asking for at the beginning of the year is presenting itself. Mm -hmm. And it feels like I just got out of the deep end. You know what I'm saying? Like I just made it to where I wasn't standing on my tippy toes trying to breathe for air. You know what I'm saying? Where the water's going over my head every now and then. I kind of made it to solid ground and I'm like, he wants me to keep moving forward. But I'm like, I finally got out of the spot where I wasn't struggling. So I'm like, hey, do I really want to move? <laughs> Can I just stay right here where I'm not, you know, like sinking or struggling? And then it's like, but I mean, he put people that have made, gave me no choice but to go for it. Because they're on me like, hey, you said you wanted to do this. You said wanted, you want to do that. Because like at the end of the year, I like ask God to help me with my finances and help me get, you know what I'm saying, find other ways to make money and other ways to better myself. And it was just like, all right, well, okay, you asking for this. And then I started paying my tithes and offer and I was like, I can't ask for this if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So I started doing what I was supposed to be doing mm -hmm. and managing my money better. And then I was like, I got opportunities where it was like, okay, here's the stock market here. You know, here's the opportunity to learn this, start investing in this, 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 and this. And then it's like, all right, you can't be scared to do it because I'm telling you to do it. So it's like, but God, I got this amount of money in the bank account. If something happens, like, what, what yeah. am I supposed to do if something happens? Like, and then I'm like, okay, well, all right, you, you said you're going to help me, you know. So it's like trusting him to say, hey, go after these opportunities. Or even with housing, it's like, okay, I wanted to buy a couple houses or flip them, but I'm like, well, I ain't got the money to buy the houses, and then the money presents itself to buy the houses, and I'm like, um, <laughs> all right, yeah. I got money, but what if I fail at doing this? Mm -hmm. Or you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, you giving me the opportunity to do this, but what if this doesn't work out? Where do I go from here? Like, and it's just like, yo, you asked for this, so are you gonna take it? Or are you not gonna take it? So I'm kind of battling where it's what I've been used to struggling. And finally not struggling anymore to the point where it's like, hey, I'm in a safe spot, but I want to be more than a safe. I want to I want to move forward. I want to be out the pool, not still in the pool. You know what I'm saying? Like, so. For me, the biggest thing is the weight of the responsibility of what growth will require. Because it's like, if I'm just complacent and I'm used to. Like once you are doing something and you become comfortable and accustomed to it, you don't really have to grow, you don't really have to change, you just keep doing it. But when something requires you to continue to grow yourself or push you or challenge you, that that responsibility is like, do I really want to do all that work? I'm a lazy person. I think what we're struggling too is, is with the fact that a, a lot of these are, are delayed responses to prayers that we've had. Yeah. But, but it doesn't A look the way that you want it to look right, like. Right, it didn't right. come in the in the vehicle oh. that you expected it to. Yeah. And when it did come in, it was just kind of like, well, yeah, Lord, I asked, but uh, no. I like this. Are you sure? Is you sure it's supposed to be doing this? Just me a sign. Yeah. <laughs> Again, he like, you know what? I ain't sending no more sign. Yeah. This is it. What you gonna do with that? I look at it like this. You remember how, like, when we were younger, our mom would be cooking like a big meal. I feel like God has got something big for all of us. Right. But then we're so used to, well, mommy, I'm hungry now. You know what? Go get a snack for right now, just to hold you up until I'm done. <laughs> now the fact that God's not giving us no more snacks, <laughs> are we gonna? Are we willing to wait for what's at the end for that yeah. meal? Well, you throw them on snacks too. <laughs> <laughs> from Tabby's age to to where we are now, we've disciplined ourselves to hold off on those snacks yeah. to yeah. do for our own until that meal is done. Yeah, that's good. The way the way I look at it, especially with, with Joe is hitting, is um, so having an entrepreneurial mindset, I I I've, I've learned that I can't fear not having and. How I typed that suit to God is, is God literally sat me down and he was like, why are you scared to spend this money? Because I, I need to pay for this. Why are you scared to move in that direction? Because what happens if it doesn't work? 
And he simply said to me, but well, where's your faith in me? And I was like, oh, no, no, I, I have faith in you. <laughs> right. He was like, but I'm supposed to be supplying all your needs. Your needs are met. So everything else I'm telling you to spend is not for your needs. It was what? supposed to be used for you to actually propel yourself off of this plateau uh, uh, that, that actually sat you on. He said, if you're not moving, if you're not going to move off of this plateau, you're going to drown. You're right. not... You, you standing still in, in, right. in that? That wave is about to come right. and drag you and pull you back right. into the deep end. And that's where the, you're going to drag. Right. You sitting on money is not going to do anything. Money is a tool <laughs> to be used to get you from point A to point mm -hmm. B. Not for you to be chasing it. Because once you start chasing money, you stop focusing on him. Right. 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 So, right. You know, but I was talking that too. He told me that the struggle was over. And... Three months from now, three months came, the struggle was still here. <laughs> it, it was still here. But now, the season I'm in now, the struggle is over. But when he, I know it's going to dry up, but I went back to what he said. He said, with what you're getting, you have to do with it what you need to do. Right. That wasn't, the, the struggle now, the money that I have now is not going to sustain me. I need to right. take the money that I have now and do what I need to do with that money so yes. that my future can be set up. So I can't be sitting on these hundreds of dollars scared that when somebody says, oh, you need to invest in this or you need to join that and be like, oh, no. And go to the mall. No, I'm going to invest. So it's what you're gonna do with the influx of what you have now that's gonna carry you to your future. So mm -hmm. I also think it, it helps with the people you surround yourself with too. Because, like I said, I was scared. I was like, Nah, I ain't about to do this. Like, I don't. I gotta wait. Something's gotta be perfect. And then I get a phone call. Did you make that offer yet? Did you do this? Did you do that? And I'm like, No, but I can do it. All right. <laughs> and that's the thing. Cause like that's the crazy part. Cause like. All the stuff he's done for you, you figure you have more faith in him than anybody else. Come with a little uh, pancake syrup mix of Auntie Mama. Uh -huh. I saw two perspectives. It was one perspective that said, uh, you know, she was displayed as a slave, right? Mm. Or, or made her. Mm -hmm. I said, I never looked at it like that. I saw a black woman that was being advertised that made me understand that as a black person, I can be on somebody. Yeah, so that's how I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. You know? it's one thing I heard today. Okay. From everybody. Is y'all stomachs growling? Is everybody hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs>